byo kurya byo She's an orphan. She was abandoned by fathers of her children. She was left alone to take care of her children. She almost thought her life was over. She was depressed and wanted to commit suicide. But never write yourself off. Meet around this woman who produced white. <laughs> It all began by the end of 2015 when I met a Turkish man whom we worked with. We worked on a construction site. He was an engineer and I was among people who prepared food. Later on he told me that he loves me. He promised he would take me to Turkey and get married to him. But when I accept his proposal, I accepted his proposal. I accepted his proposal because I thought my life was going to have a certain breakthrough due to life I lived. I'm an orphan and I was raised by my aunt. She had other children and this forced me to drop out of school. I have always experienced a difficult life since childhood. When he approached, I knew my life was not going to remain the same. Then we fell in love and he impregnated me. A few months later his contract expired. He had to go back to Turkey, but he knew I was pregnant. Still, he promised he would stay in touch. When I delivered this kid, he only sent me names of the baby then turned off his number. My contract also expired. After delivering this kid, I had to look for a job elsewhere. I went to a certain company looking for a job. But the manager from Nepal told me there are no job offers available, but instead he opted to help me and hence covering all my needs like paying rent and so on. Later he asked me to be his partner. When I saw how he is responsible and how he does everything for me, I agreed and we fell in love. Later he also impregnated me. He promised to give me everything I need and he could do it. I told him that I'm pregnant and she also told his colleagues but they replied to him that he has broken the rules they told him that it's not allowed to have an african child they commanded him that i should carry out abortion if not he should stop helping me he wanted to help but those compatriots of him could not allow him to do so and he stopped me from going to see him again i tried taking him to courts but still he does not turn up and from then my life has been at stake surviving is so difficult i'm not having any job and having these two children yet they are still young they need to eat grow and go to school they have to pay rent so you understand the situation i would tell other girls outside here to be very careful and discerning because if you sleep with someone though he can promise you heaven on earth before but after having sex it's over i would request people to help me right now the landlady is about to chase me i have failed to pay rent for 5 months i have no food eating is also another issue the first born needs to go to school that means school fees is needed please help me as part of our daily job the reason why we cover such heartbreaking stories is that whoever might have what to donate can help after making part one of this story people have started helping this family we visited back and found them smiling first of all i thank you afromax you have been by my side and made advocacy for me before you came i was only remaining with one bad choice which was committing suicide I'm thankful that you covered my story. Right now, I'm very happy and you can see it. Different people have started helping me. Though they haven't given me so much, but now I have hope for tomorrow. There is food. I paid the house rent loan. The landlady always wanted to chase me out of her house, but now I cleared. 
I thank everyone that helped me from the deep of my heart. May God bless you. May you keep the love you showed me. And if God keeps blessing me, I will even bless others. You showed me love, though I'm an orphan, no parent, but what you did really touched me. I don't understand how you can help someone without knowing them. I was really surprised. Thank you once again. And there is someone who promised to pay school fees of my children. I love them though I don't know them, but they've kept showing me love. And there is one who promised to buy me a house, so I'm waiting. Even my neighbors are very happy for me. They would hear me quarreling with the landlady every time, but now they see us happily together. They told me to find a small business and they will sponsor me. And that's a great idea. I like to work and I can't keep on begging. If I get what to do, it will provide for me and my kids. I opened a bank account, so I'm saving little by little so that I can have what to do in the coming days. I dropped out of school when I was in senior two, but I can manage other activities most especially small businesses. Before I felt I was alone, I never wanted to talk to people. Because of all those problems mentioned, I only thought of dying. I thought there was no meaning to this life and no importance to this life. If I could not even buy candy to my kids, I regarded myself to be worthless. But now there is food in the house my kids can eat. The house rent is paid, I can have a million reasons to talk happily to people. Right now, I'm doing well. And later, things turned upside down. I'm his brother. I saw her coming to the village. She told me she could no longer manage to live in the city. She told me she was abandoned by both fathers of these kids and everything went wrong, so she decided to come back here. Though I myself have nothing to help her. <laughs> After the support and money people sent me, I decided to learn how I can be productive with that money. I specialized myself in soap making for a period of one month then invested the little capital I had in soap making and had started working. Then, COVID struck. Because of this pandemic, everything went wrong to everyone, not only me. Things changed because of the lockdown, hence failing to pay my rent and failure to provide for my kids once again. When lockdown restrictions were lifted, I decided to pack my things and come back to see my brother here in the village. Soaps are necessary in our day-to-day -day life and they can also be a source of income. When given capital, I can start making them. Search the market, then distribute it. It would help me covering my day-to-day -day needs. People were amazed by my kids and my kids are slowly, slowly adapting to this village life, step by step, because they have no any other choice. They have to get used to this. Though they started suffering from cough and flu because of a different environment, but soon they'll get used. Last time I was happy you visited, though it was painful, but it was productive. Later, people started supporting me. Someone asked me how I live. She's a Burundian lady living abroad, and I told her everything. I live in that house with my brother, yet she has a wife. The house has one room and the living room. So the brother stayed in the room with the wife and I also slept in the living room with my kids together with gold and other materials. It wasn't easy. She said that's not fair. She asked what you have. I told her I have a small piece of land. She said, let's build a house for you and your kids. So she sent money and in addition to what other people also contributed, that's how I started building this house. Mm -hmm. 
That lady who supported me has a golden heart. She helped me without knowing me and she said she'll keep supporting me and try to make me have a better life. She told me she'll be like my elder sister and one day she'll pay me a visit. May God keep blessing her together with all those who supported me. No matter how little or big they had, they have blessed me. Some gave me ideas. They have showed me that I'm not alone. They have been by my side and I'm strong today. The idea of building this house was brought by the lady I mentioned. She goes by the name Violet. I never imagined having my own house and today my house of three bedrooms and a living room is under construction. It's a miracle. I thank you, Afrimax, Violet, and everyone who keeps helping me. And boom, the house is finally complete. Today is a day of happiness, a day to remember. We have to celebrate my new house. And welcome to my house. Welcome my home. Nakazane zamuze anje. Karibu. Urakoze chare. Yes, ngo tukawa twageze kwa Anunciata. Me and my children were very happy and thankful to Violet who made this possible after hearing that my house is complete. She also sent me money to buy the seats, TV, beds, mattress, everything that is needed for a house to be complete. All was covered by her. I can't thank her enough. May God bless her. All I did was take care of money given from these different people and not misuse it. I thank each and everyone who contributed to making this possible. Since the beginning, those who sent me money, those who gave me decent ideas, words can't explain how they've made my heart so happy. I thank them all. I thank them all and wish them God's blessing to them in abundance. And to those who wishes to pay me a visit, you're welcome. The gates are open. However we queer, however poor, however little our faith, or however small our grace may be, our names are still written on his heart, nor shall we lose our share in Jesus' love. Thank you for watching. This is Afromax English and I'm Elijah. Remember to subscribe.